time to talk Cunard, which is a cruise line that I haven't spoken to you guys much about. I am currently coming to you from the Garden Lounge on board Queen Elizabeth, and in this video, I am going to talk to you about 20 things that I think you need to think about doing if you're planning to come on to a Cunard ship. And spoiler for now, most of them are free. So look, join me down in the cabin and let's get started. Now, welcome to my cabin, which is down here on deck number six of Queen Elizabeth. And to kick off at number 20 today, we need to talk about this, which is the in stateroom dining menu on board a Cunard ship. Now you can see, if I just open this up, there's quite a lot going on. It's quite an expansive menu. Now I'll put a better picture of it on now for you so that you can pause the video and have a read. But it's worth mentioning, there's a couple of different meal times in here. Now first up is breakfast and that's covered on a separate menu card. You then move in from 10 a.m. onto the brunch menu, changing over at midday to the full day menu and at 11 p.m. the night menu then kicks in. Now other things that you can also get on room service, you could get a full afternoon tea service delivered, which take it from me, that is worth trying, but we'll come back to that shortly. Now you can also order drinks from the bar to your stateroom on the room service menu, but it's worth noting that while the food is included in your Cunard cruise fare, the drinks are not. So always remember, they are chargeable. So just check how much you're going to pay for those drinks before you place that order. Now moving off of room service, let's talk about getting outside. So we're now leaving the room behind and we're going up to the very top at the very front of the ship. And this is where you'll find the Cunard Sports Pavilion. Now this area is amazing and I've never ever seen this on a cruise ship before. Up there you'll find three different sports. You'll find paddle tennis, you'll find outdoor bowls, and you'll also find croquet. And each of them has got their own pitch or their own court or their own lawn. And my bit of advice to you is that if you're planning to cruise in a warmer climate, you'll probably find that space will be pretty quiet during the day. I found that the peak times for going up there would be during the morning time, usually kind of during or after breakfast, or at night as the sun goes down. So if you're able, during the day, head up there and you should actually have the place to yourself. I've never seen anybody queuing to use any of those facilities, but really refreshing to see something so different featuring on these cruise ships. Now, speaking of different, let's talk beer. Now on a Cunard ship, the, you'll now be able to find a number of different craft beers that you won't find anywhere else. Now, Cunard have teamed up with an award-winning microbrewery back on land to create three different types of beer. Now, first up, you've got Cunard Gold, you've then got Cunard Red, and you've then got Cunard Black. Now, usually, you would order this draft from the Golden Lion pub down on deck number two of Queen Elizabeth, or you can do what I do and go for a beer flight. So rather than ordering a full pint of each, you actually can go in and order a third of a pint of each of those beers. And at the point of recording this video, that experience was priced about eight US dollars. So a really, really good way to try those three beers without A, breaking the bank, and without B, having to drink three entire pints. Now, next up, let's talk about flowers. So you're probably getting a feel already that this list, we are going to jump around so many different topics. But this is the first cruise ship that I've been on where the smell of fresh flowers is so, so strong in some of the venues. Make sure that you head down to the Grand Lobby, which spans across decks one, two, and three, and smell that centerpiece down there, which will be coming all the way through all of the venues in that main area. And also head along to the Queen's Room on decks two, and deck three, and you'll absolutely be able to smell the same thing along there. It really is remarkable morning, noon, evening, or through the night to go down there. And every single time you walk through those venues, you 100% will be able to smell the flowers. It's amazing. Now, I promised you that we were going to jump around topics, which means the next up, we're going back outside and we're gonna talk about the promenade deck. Now the promenade deck on Queen Elizabeth is a feature that not too many modern cruise ships have where it's a full wrap around deck that takes you all the way around deck number three of the ship. Now that includes a section at the front that cuts along underneath where the bridge would be 
at the front of the ship and a section at the back that cuts along so you're essentially standing right over the wake. Now the views on that promenade deck are absolutely remarkable and it allows you to have a much closer relationship and experience of that ocean rather than viewing it from decks 9 or deck 10 up on the very, very top of the ship. Now next up on our countdown today, we're coming back in and we're moving down to the Golden Lion Pub. Now in here we're not going to talk beer and actually we're not even talking drinks, we're talking food. Now I've met so many people on this cruise who didn't realise that you could go in and get a pub lunch until the end of our first week on board. Now in that venue you can get, totally included in your cruise fare by the way, a pub lunch or a pub dinner. Now think fish and chips, think pies, think curries, think sticky toffee puddings. Basically, if you could get it on a pub menu back home in the UK, you probably should expect to get it in the Golden Lion pub. So 100% head in there and check it out. Now, right next door to the Golden Lion pub, you'll find the Royal Court Theatre. Now, we'll come back to the shows in a second, but what I want to talk to you about first is movies. Now, a lot of cruise lines now are finding different ways to show movies at night on a ship. Most of them are deciding to use a large screen by the swimming pool on the top deck and they'll show a movie there and they'll have a bar open and they'll have blankets that you can use to lie on a lounger to watch the film. However, Cunard are trying something a little bit different and that is to show a movie in the onboard theatre. Now, this means that the theatre gets used during the day, which to be honest, is a venue that quite often sits empty on cruise ships all day. So I'm a really, really big fan of what Cunard are doing with this. Now, in terms of listings and finding out what films will be available, you won't know that prior to your cruise, but every single night you'll receive the daily schedule, which is essentially what shows you what's happening on board your cruise ship the following day. Now, as part of the listings on this schedule, you'll then see what movie is playing the next day, and you can plan your day around that, but take it from me, it's a remarkable place to head down and watch a film. Next up, ice cream. So if you've followed my channel for a while, you will probably know that I absolutely love dessert and I love nothing more than ice cream. So I was delighted to realise that soft serve ice cream on board a Cunard ship is free. It's totally included in your cruise fare and you pour it yourself so you can go as many or as few times as you like. Now in terms of where you'll find the machine, you head up to deck 9 and head into the Lido Buffy restaurant and in there you'll find the machine usually one half will be vanilla ice cream, one half will be chocolate and at dinner time there'll be a toppings bar as well that you can get sprinkles, you can get chocolate chips, you can get nuts and things and honestly, take it from me, it's well worth checking out. So even if you're travelling with kids and you're maybe a little bit nervous about all the optional extras that they might be tempted to go for, take them up to deck number nine and cones and ice creams are totally free of charge. One thing that Cunard also do that quite a few cruise lines that offer free ice cream don't do is they also allow you to serve it into a bowl rather than just into a cone, similar to Swan Royal Caribbean. I recently saw that they were very hesitant to put it into a bowl and it was much more preferred to just take a cone rather than go into the wind jammer and bring out a tub. So yeah, head up to deck number nine and get some ice cream. Now, totally different topic again. We're on number 12 now and we're going to talk about, yeah, religion. Now, whichever religion you're a part of, there's quite a few of them that are actually really, really well supported by Cunard. Now, on this ship, we've had Sabbath services and we've also had a traditional maritime church service that takes place on a Sunday. Now, that service is a cross-denominational service and it's led by either one of the officers on board or, in our case, the ship's captain. So it's a really interesting space, whether you're religious or not, to head down and to socialise with some of your fellow guests in an environment that you may or may not be overly used to. Now, next up, coming away from church, let's talk laundry. Now, I personally am living on cruise ships for most of this year, and one thing that I really, really struggle with is finding somewhere to do my laundry in between ships. 
Now, I was so happy to find out that on Queen Elizabeth, I can go and I can do my laundry totally free of charge. Now, the detergent is free, the washer is free, and the dryer is free. The only thing I would say is that the laundry rooms, although they are located in multiple locations around the ship, they are really, really small and they are incredibly popular. I didn't think they would be anywhere near as popular as they are. Now, unfortunately, in the case of this cruise, we've actually had broken machines in our laundry room for the entire cruise, which has meant that our whole deck here is sharing just two washing machines. However, it does save the pain of getting back on land and doing all your washing. So head in there. If you've got a sea day, maybe you've got some rough weather and you want to just chill out and not go outside, then check out your laundrette, go and get your laundry done, and you don't have to bother about it when you go home. Okay, next up, number 10. Let's talk about dining. Now, you'll be able to head over to my channel and check out a full dining guide for Cunard ships, but we need to talk about the main dining room because the quality of food on here, I've been really, really happy with during my 14 night cruise on Queen Elizabeth. So if you're the type of person that enjoys quite a formal environment, then definitely check out the Britannia dining room, which you'll find on this ship, down on decks two and deck three. Now in there, you can expect to get a three or a four course dinner every night of your cruise, and that's totally included in your cruise fare. So definitely head down and check that out. If however, fancy food or fancy environments aren't your type of thing, you're absolutely more than welcome to eat up in the Lido restaurant up on deck number nine. Next up, learning about your ports of call. Now Cunard, is one cruise line that I think do a particularly good job of educating you about the ports that you're going to be stopping in during your cruise. Now, with some other cruise lines, I've seen where you go to a shopping lecture that's combined with an educational piece on the upcoming port. And in that presentation, the majority of it feels like an opportunity for the cruise line to sell you a VIP shopping pass or to sell you an excursion. But on here, I genuinely felt as though the focus of the presentation was to make you comfortable with your upcoming port and there was also a little nod to excursions so it was definitely focusing on the educational piece and the shore excursions part came after so definitely head down to the theatre a day or two before you dock in your next port of call and you should have an educational lecture about your upcoming port. Now what that means is that you can find out Roughly, how much does a taxi cost to the beach that you're planning to go to? What are the top tourist attractions in the place that you're going to be visiting? And actually, what I appreciated most, can you do it alone? Or should you be planning to go on a cruise line excursion because it's difficult to get to where you're going? Or maybe it's not the safest to get to where you're going independently? So head down to the theatre and check out those learning opportunities about your upcoming ports. Now, speaking of learning, Let's move to the library. Now this space on board Queen Elizabeth is the most beautiful library I've ever seen on a cruise ship. This is a double floored library with a beautiful wooden staircase that takes you up from deck number two up to deck number three. It really is a remarkable library and you can go in there on any day of your cruise and borrow a book. Now that book just has to be returned before the end of your cruise. So absolutely go in there Try something new that you've never seen before and see if you enjoy it. Worst case scenario, you take the book back and get another. So yeah, library, definitely head down and check that out. Now, this is one area that I think Cunard are doing particularly well on this ship. In the theatre, you've got regular seating and you've also got private boxes that hang down either side of the auditorium. Now, those boxes are usually offered on a first come first serve basis so if you get down there first you can get in and you can enjoy the show from your own private box and you can close the back curtain and keep the world out now you can also pay for an experience which gives you a bottle of champagne and usually strawberries or chocolate dipped strawberries before the show which you can then enjoy throughout the performance now that experience is usually offered for the Cunard production company shows which you'll usually find on a seven night cruise, you'll have two or three of those productions available. So whilst I haven't tried the experience where you can pay for the champagne and the strawberries, 
I have watched a show from the boxes and it's a really, really unique experience. Now, number five is called Cunard Insights and that's exactly what we're going to move on to look at. Now, on every single cruise with Cunard, you will always receive your daily programme the night before. Now, on your daily programme, there should be a section in there called Cunard Insights. Now, this is where you'll get notifications about your guest speakers who are presenting in the Royal Court Theatre during whatever day of your cruise. Now, we've had a spokesperson from NASA on board the ship this week. We've also had an Oscar winner on the ship this week. And it's been really interesting to pop into these lectures to try and learn something new. So they're not for everyone, granted, but if you've got a day at sea and you want to spend an hour trying to learn something that you didn't know before, then why not head into an astronomy lecture and see if you find anything particularly interesting. Now, on every sea day of our cruise, we've found that we've had probably three lectures during the day, so three Cunard Insight sessions, and I usually try and attend one of them. And if I like it, great. And if I don't, then at least I've tried. Now, moving on from Cunard Insights, enough about learning. Let's talk formal night. Now, if you've looked in a Cunard brochure or you've spoken to anyone that's done a Cunard cruise before, they've probably told you about formal night and they've probably told you about the dress code policies that apply on Cunard ships at night. Now, I will have a separate video coming very soon which will talk to you about the dress code policies on a Cunard ship. However, my advice to you coming in in the top five tips is to get on board with formal night during a formal night on board this ship, it really does come alive. Everyone takes part. The ballroom is full of formal wear and it's a really, really nice environment to be a part of. Now, as part of your cruise, you'll have a number of different gala evenings, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in my vlog series. But you should expect, for example, the Roaring Twenties, which is a Gatsby themed night. You should also expect a black and white gala night and a few more. That, as I say, head over and I'll tell you about them in my other videos. Now, number three, try something different. Now, Cunard as a cruise line is, for me, particularly refreshing in the respect that there's quite a few activities on during the day that I, historically, have never taken part in. For example, on this cruise ship, it's the first time I've ever seen a passenger choir be organised, where throughout the cruise, a group of passengers, in this case, there must have been about 20 or 30 passengers, spend a bit of time on every single sea day catching up together with a few people from the Royal Court Theatre production team. They form a choir and on the final day of the cruise, they put on a performance, which if singing isn't your cup of tea, don't worry, it's not mine either. But rather than me trying something new in the respect of singing, my example of trying something new is going to the recital from the choir. And you know what? I really, really enjoyed it. But some other examples of what you could do, you could go and play bridge, which again is a sport or a game that I've never ever played before. You could go to a watercolour arts class. There are so many things that you could just try for the first time on a cruise. And who knows, you might find your next hobby. So definitely head down and give it a go. Number two, afternoon tea. This one, you knew this was going to be in the top three. Afternoon tea on a Cunard ship is now getting pretty famous where every single day of your cruise, so not just your days at sea, not just your days in port, every single day at 3 p.m. down in the Queen's Room, you'll be served a formal afternoon tea. Now, think scones, think cakes, think sandwiches, think jam, think cream, think coffee, think lots of different types of tea, you name it, you can probably get it from a tea point of view. Now, I really enjoy the afternoon tea in the Queen's Room, but one thing that I maybe enjoy more, and this might be controversial, is to order afternoon tea to my stateroom so that I can just chill out in the comfort of my room and watch something on the TV. And that way, I don't need to sit and make conversation with people around me all the time who I don't necessarily know, and I can have the same premium experience, but in the comfort of my own room. So definitely, afternoon tea, head down and check that out. And that brings us to my number one top tip for if you're coming on to a Cunard ship, and that is to get off the ship. Now, 
some Cunard itineraries will be taking you to fantastic ports. And I've met people this week who haven't got off the ship at all through their own personal choice. And that's okay. But genuinely, some of the things that I've seen this week have been incredible. For example, I have experienced the best beach this week that I've ever seen over in Aruba. And there was a number of people who I met on the ship who had never been to Aruba before who didn't get off for the simple reason that they thought the beach might be too far away. My advice, do a little bit of homework on your ports before your cruise and aim to get off the ship in every single port. Even if you just get off for a wander around the port or a wander around the terminal. And if it doesn't feel right, then head back to the ship. But please promise me you've paid all this money to come on a cruise. At some point, get off the ship and go and explore because there's a lot to see in these ports of calls. Now anyway, that is the top 20 things that I think you need to think about if you're planning to cruise with Cunard. I really hope that you found this video useful. If you have, it would be amazing if you could jump down below and give it a thumbs up. And while you're there, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, it would be amazing to have you along in my journey as I try to show you as many cruise ships as I possibly can. But for now, I'm going to go and phone an afternoon tea to this cabin and relax. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch up with all of you in my next video. Cheers, guys. Bye.